Tata. Are you ready? Action. This photo was taken about 20 years ago when I was working in New York. The publisher asked uh, if I could cover a small interview. So I ended up calling the small association and Musashi Gawa stable myself, asking if they could somehow let me take some pictures. That's how I managed to capture these interesting shots. Back then, digital camera wasn't a thing. So I was shooting with film every day. The camera I was using was uh, a bit special and I'll show it to you. Uh, I was shooting with this kind of camera all the time and this was the uh, easiest to, to use for me. It's what they call a large format camera. In terms of size, it's what they call Shinogo size. It means a 4 by 5 inch. You might have seen something like this size in photo studios. It was various functions. And the most famous one is the Swiss made Zinar P2. It's incredibly heavy. But because of the many features, it can be used in various ways which is what made it really interesting for me. The theme of this photo shoot was uh, a woman trapped in ice. It was a bit of an intriguing and interesting thing. I thought about how to express it and I happened to come across antique glass when I was walking around. It was hanging on the window of the restaurant or somewhere. I thought it could work. So I went to great lengths to find a supplier and I purchased a large piece of glass. The model lay on the ground and I placed the glass over her. Shooting like that created the perfect impression of being trapped in ice. Quite a few people who see these photos when I ask me, how did you do that? If you have seen my photos, you might know that I tend to create a sort of constructed world in my pictures. So it starts with an idea, which then I decided on the shooting location, the models, and all the necessary elements. We set up the lighting and everything to create the setup. And that's a common approach. I'm often asked about lighting and there isn't really a set rule. But if there's one thing, it's that I want it to appear natural. I don't want viewers to feel any discomfort. The reason discomfort arises is when something looks artificial or impossible. Humans tend to get a little stuck on that. For the human eye, the most natural look is the sunlight or light coming, coming in through a window is ideal. So when you design things that mimic natural conditions, I think people find it beautiful and less artificial. So I always try to avoid anything that looks unnatural. Of course, it changes uh, depending on what I'm shooting. But if we are including videos, you can think, think of it as about the same amount as moving someone who lives alone, like a typical one-person apartment move. It's difficult to say, it's the only way I can express myself. If I were good at singing or painting, maybe, I wouldn't have uh, ended up going uh, doing photography. It's something I can do well. As for the relationship 
between photography and, and digital. Uh, my style often resembles a digital art. For example, uh, this photo uh, with my yellow nails, it looks like it was created digitally, but I actually built a kaleidoscope myself. It's a quite large kaleidoscope and I set up a camera and lights uh, inside it. I created a, a setup that allowed me to shoot in beautifully. Then there's another one where there's a photo of a naked woman with a flower on her skin. Many people think I combined uh, this digitally afterward, but actually I have a light that can project an image and I use it to project flowers onto a different part of the body. It was a creative approach I tried. Certainly, uh, here's a combined version that I captured the essence of uh, both A and B. Speaking of videos, there's something similar. Not long ago, there was a movie adaptation of the anime Ghost in the Shell. And as a spin-off from that, they asked me to create a short film in live action. It was about 10 minutes long. The story is set in futuristic Tokyo and I had to figure, figure out how to bring this uh, near future to life. Eventually, I managed, I managed to capture the essence of an unprecedented futuristic city using just the shooting capabilities of my camera. Many people thought it was done using CGI, but it was actually a captivating project crafted entirely with uh, just one camera. Uh, lately, the trend of retouching has really been on the rise, even among professionals, especially in advertising work. But as a photographer deep down, I want to really solely on the photo itself. So when I create my works, I usually stick to the principle of minimal retouching. Of course, there are times in jobs where it's inevitable. Even so, I try to keep it to a minimum. Take, uh, for example, close-up to of models. If you look closely, you'll see things like fine hair and wrinkles, which are perfectly human. But I think our focus should be on making those aspects appear beautiful. Well, it's not just about photography, but also the skill of the makeup artist and a proper understanding of lighting. I believe the years of experience and expertise as a craftsman in creating skin texture and similar aspects could come in handy here. The most important thing is his curiosity. Well, I didn't think it's limited to photographers, but to to be interested in all kinds of things, such as whether you're you're always not satisfied with something, or whether you're looking for something new, or whether you can express yourself in a different way is the most important thing. I think this is something important for everyone in their journey of life. I think it's really great that everyone can easily take photos and enjoy photography. However, there's still a need to high-end photography. For example, in various corporate advertisements or even in movies, especially big productions, there is a world where things are not just easily captured. And in that sense, I think it's going to divide into two opposite groups in the future. In my opinion, the future trends will be that good things get even better and simple things spread more widely and easily. Since there are so many different people, it's hard to make a statement. But personally, I like to encourage aspiring photographers to pursue quality instead of just focusing on tasks. I encourage them to elevate the fundamental accuracy and quality of photography. The techniques we, we've developed could fade away if we don't keep 
pushing and practicing them. Whether it's lighting or handling equipments, these skills are similar to traditions of, of passing down technical expertise, which is why I want to keep teaching and passing them on. There have been many assistants in the past, and I hope they, along with the current generation, will continue passing the, uh, these skills to the next generations.